So did you know that there are some states that allow you to input your ID onto your Apple wallet and then use it as your only form of ID? Or that there are some hotel chains that allow you to use your key card in your Apple wallet to unlock your actual hotel room? Those are some of just the small efficiency gains that you get by using your Apple wallet and knowing exactly how to use it. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about the Apple wallet, talk about the ins and outs of it, because I think it's one of the more underrated apps in the Apple ecosystem because it really is a peace of mind type of application because it allows you to not only pay for products and store different credit cards, but also be able to kind of house your documentation or maybe give you a high yield savings account. So like I mentioned, I will be breaking this up into two different sections. The first one will be the Apple Wallet application that kind of encompasses everybody. And then secondly, is going to be for those people that do have an Apple Card that kind of unlocks that secondary feature set that comes with owning an Apple Card, which I know is only US based. So without further ado, let's start with that first section. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's hop right into this video and I will have timestamps down in the description below if you guys want to jump around and figure out exactly, you know, what feature set you want to learn about. But like I mentioned, we're gonna start off with just the Apple Wallet application in general, and then we'll move on to other things like Apple Cash, as well as the Apple Card and what benefits come with that. So the first part is gonna be all about things that anybody has access to. And the first thing we're gonna do is go right into the Wallet app itself. So there's a couple different things that you need to know about the Wallet app. So firstly, this is a Wallet app. This is what you're greeted with. It is made very, very simple on purpose because they don't want any frills in here. They don't want a bunch of menu options. You pretty much just have two different options when it comes to the wallet app itself. You have a list of all of your cards over here, which these are your actual payment cards. And if you keep swiping down, you also have all the different kind of ticketings or any other kind of ticket or anything else that has Apple Wallet support. So for instance, we're going on a trip next week and we do have some train tickets. We also have our tickets from CES. I have my health insurance card and some other things down here. But the most important thing right here is going to be your Apple Wallet and all the credit cards that you have on here and your debit cards. And the way that you add a debit card or a credit card is very simple. You press this little plus button right here to the top right hand corner. And then you have a bunch of different options right here. You can add previous cards that have been added to a previous Apple Wallet, maybe on an older iPhone or an Apple Watch or an iPad. You can set up Apple Pay later. You can add an Apple account and then you have the ability to add a debit or credit card a transit card or your driver's license or state id so the first thing i will mention is the driver's license or state id of course is only in the united states and as of right now there's only four states that actually support this and that's going to be arizona colorado maryland and georgia and there's about 20 other states really looking into this as the main form of id which is going to be amazing and i'm in new jersey it's one of those states that's kind of next up on the list and i cannot wait until i can get rid of my actual physical id card and just rock with my virtual one but the process to add something is very, very simple. You just tap on here, you fill out exactly which one you want to choose from, and then you're able to kind of add your actual ID. And same thing goes with an Apple credit or debit card. So this is the prompt that you get when you're actually adding a brand new credit card. Very self-explanatory. You press continue. You can either take an image of the card and it makes it very easy, or you can enter all the card details manually and then it will add on by itself. And now this is where things get a little bit confusing as we start to set up some different types of payment forms. So the first one's going to be the add Apple account. So the add Apple account, this card is going to be strictly for things you get through the App Store. So there's going to be gift cards, there's going to be stuff and money they can only use towards things in the App Store. So it says use your account balance to purchase products, apps, games, music, and more. So essentially just an Apple gift card that can be used in the App Store as well as physically in an Apple Store to purchase hardware products. So that is one form of, I guess, Apple payment that you can use as we move forward. And the next thing I want to show off here before we get into the other forms of payment is going to be the setup Apple Pay Later. And basically what this allows you to do is pay for purchases and four interest fee payments every two weeks available online and in apps where Apple Pay is accepted. I personally have not set this up, although you can see that I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like because I'm not a big fan of these short term loans, even though there is zero interest only if you pay them on time. But it's a little bit predatory in my opinion. But if this is something that you want to use, Apple now offers this native leaf on any purchases, I believe, between $100 and $1,000. So you can just press continue and get this set up. And it's basically applying seconds, get approved, and then you're making payments. We'll press next here. And if you really want to do this, as you can see, it lets you do $75 to $1,000 with the minimum being $75. And then you can kind of get this set up, which again, to each their own. And then as I mentioned, the previous card section is for cards that I've added maybe on a previous iPhone that I don't want to add right now. These are just debit cards that I have that I don't want to add, so I leave it as is. And then again, this is your main Apple Wallet. Now, another thing to differentiate is that in the Apple Wallet itself, if you go to the application, you actually do not make any payments from here. I'll show you guys exactly how to actually bring up the Apple Wallet when you're ready to make a payment. So the next thing we're going to do is hop into the Apple Wallet settings because there's a lot of settings in here that you should be very familiar with as you're getting used to getting your Apple Wallet and using it as your main form of wallet. 
moving forward. So here again, when you go into your Apple Wallet or your Wallet and Apple Pay section, in the settings section itself, you get a list of all the payment cards that you have that we saw on the Apple Wallet app. So you get your Apple Cash, which we'll touch on in a little bit. You know, you have my different credit cards that are on here. You have your Apple Card, which we'll also touch on in a bit. Other credit cards. And then again, you can add cards from here. And then you have your other cards. So this isn't those tickets and those transit tickets that I mentioned earlier. These are other cards that applications have alongside of it that maybe act as sort of like a gift card. They act sort of as a card or they act as a physical card that you would have in a physical space. So for instance, World of Hyatt, instead of using maybe a physical key card to get into your actual room, you can just use a World of Hyatt account, use your World of Hyatt card, and then be able to use your room and access your room just using an NFC temp from your phone, just like Apple Pay. Same thing goes with the Disney Magic Mobile Pass. We use it this past, I think, November to get onto rides and get into parks and things like that. So that's always good to see. And then you have your account section, which is, again, your Apple Cash Savings account, which we'll touch on in a little bit. And then you have your other sections here. So this is gonna be how you actually bring up your Apple Wallet when you're actually ready to pay. So if you're ready to pay at a terminal, you just double tap on your lock button and you will have a card that you get to choose by default. As you can see, I have it right there. It's gonna ask for your face ID. And then if not, it's gonna ask for your passcode and actually pay. But if you wanna choose a different card, you just say, maybe I wanna use this Mary Up on Boy card. And then you can just scan your face and it's gonna use that card. But by default, it's going to choose one, which I'll show you guys how to actually access right now. So as you can see down here in the transaction default details, your default card for me is my Chase Sapphire Reserve, which again, you can go in here and change it to any one of the cards you have on here, including even your Apple Cash card, which is great to see. And then you have all your information here, which hopefully is blurred out. But then you also have this transit card. So for the transit card, I love this feature because it makes it so much easier when I'm going on the subway in New York, or again, anything that involves Apple Pay and the actual transit. So for instance, normally, like I mentioned, if you're going up to a terminal to pay, you have to double click on the lock button to bring up that card. So with the Express Transit card, all you have to do, you don't have to actually interact with your phone at all. You just pull your phone out of your pocket and put it to the payment terminal and it'll automatically pay using this default card that you choose for your Express Transit card. Now you can turn this feature off by selecting none. So if somebody does get a hold of your phone, technically if they want to, they can be riding the subway all over New York for free because it doesn't ask for any form of identification like Face ID or Touch ID. But again, I'm willing to kind of give up that security because it's only $2.50 every time I use the MTA and the subway transit. So it makes it a little bit easier and more efficient whenever I'm walking through. So I don't have to like remember to double click and then get stuck, which happens a decent amount of time. So this is how I keep all my wallet and Apple Pay settings. Some other things to take note of on the Apple Wallet itself is all the detail that you get by each individual actual credit card. So if I go into this one right here, you can see every single transaction that's happened over the last couple days and the latest transactions. You can even click into them, see exactly where they occurred, what card you used, whether it was approved or not, the date. You also have the ability to contact the bank itself and also report incorrect merchants. So you get to see all this information with each credit card, even though it is an Apple card, which I think is great to see because it gives you great insight on how much you're spending, how often you're spending and things of that nature. And then you have your three dots, which I believe is called the ellipses button, where you can get the card number, the card details, and notifications. You also have the card details, which lets you know what bank it's from. You get more card information that we saw earlier. Express Transit is turned off for this card, billing address, and all that good stuff. And then lastly, you do have the notifications, which you can actually turn off and on. So every time you spend money with this particular card, you can kind of get a quick notification, which I like to leave turned on. And then lastly, at the very bottom of the settings, you can actually remove the card if you want to. So if you are done with this card, if maybe you close the account or you cut up the card and you want to get rid of it, you can then do so from your digital wallet as well. And then when you scroll down, you get to your non-payment card. So for instance, this is our boarding pass for a trip that we have coming up, which is great to see. We have both of the tickets right here. You can click on the ellipsis to get some pass details. It's for Eurostar, all the information that you need, and unless we even give you the instructions on actually how to use it. So it says, it gives you all the information that you need, which is awesome. And then you can even share it with somebody else if you need to. So if you're going with somebody else and this is a ticket for two people, you can then share it and then they could add it to their Apple wallet. And the same thing goes for all the rest of these. So this is my charge point card. This is an NFC enabled charge point card, which I never ever use. Then you have your Aetna, which is again, my health insurance. You have priority pass. So if somebody wants to go in and use the lounge, you can use this for that, which is great to see. And the ellipsis just gives you all the information that you want. And then of course you have all the expired ones as well. So if you scroll all the way down, you can view all 93 expired ones and you can see that these are all old ones that you can then edit and delete in mass if you want to. So that will do it for the universal section. So everybody that has an iPhone has access to this part of the Apple Wallet app. But the next thing I do wanna talk about is going to be what's based in the US. So again, the next two pieces are gonna be about Apple Cash and the Apple Card. So if you're not in the US, I totally understand if you wanna leave or if you do wanna find out a little bit more, even if you aren't, by all means stick around. But the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Apple Cash. 
So Apple Cash is basically a virtual debit card that Apple has that can give you as a way to store forms of payment, right? So if somebody sends you money via Apple Cash, it'll be stored on here. And then also it works with the Apple Card because it kind of plays hand in hand, which we'll touch on in a second. But basically once you set this up, it acts as a normal debit card that you can use with Apple Pay transactions. If there's money on here, it's very easy to use. You can add money from an external account. You get money when it comes to cash back from this credit card. But to give you some information on it, you press the three dots. You can add money from a bank if you want to. Again, I don't have an actual debit card on my Apple Pay right now, so I can't do it that way. But then you can also transfer to the bank. So if you have money in this card right now and you want to transfer it to your, you know, your personal bank, you can do that as well. You have the ability to add recurring payments. You have a card number, card details, notifications, and everything is on here. So you can see that I've had a couple of transactions where, you know, I ended up sending money to my brother or anything like that. And the way that it's done is actually really unique. It's done through iMessage. So for instance, if I want to send my brother some Apple Cash money, I go on the Apple Cash right here, and you can literally just add as much money as you want. You can show the keypad. I can either request or send it, and then it'll send like an iMessage. And in the second they receive that iMessage, it'll be available to them in their actual Apple Cash card, and it'll show up right here as let's say a $5 amount. And then from there, you can then send it off to your bank. You can then reuse it for maybe a Starbucks coffee, whatever the case may be. But it's a very easy debit card to use. And that's basically what it is. It is a virtual debit card that is by Apple and it can be used for anything. That's why it's a little bit confusing because you have your Apple account card, which is basically a gift card that can only be used at the App Store and Apple stores. Then you have your Apple Cash card, which is a debit card, which can be used for pretty much anything that takes Apple Pay because there is no physical card. And then you can also set up a virtual card number. So if you want to use this online where it doesn't actually use Apple Pay, then you can set up a virtual card number and then be used as a normal debit card. I will say there's no perk into using this. That's why I don't really use it. Sometimes I use Apple Pay just because some people don't have Venmo or Zelle or anything like that. But I very rarely use Apple Cash nowadays. And then again, like I mentioned, you do need to be US based and over 18 to set up your Apple Cash card and just go into your wallet and app and turn this to on and then it'll show up and it'll walk you through the process of setting up your Apple Cash. And then lastly, let's talk about the beloved Apple Card right here. So the Apple Card came out a few years ago now at this point, I believe in 2018 or 2019. It was Apple's first foray into the credit card game. And this isn't going to be a full review of the Apple Card itself. I might be doing one of those later on. This is going to be more of so of what the actual features and capabilities are by it, right? So the first thing that you really need to know or the only thing you need to know is that it is a zero fee card and you get 3% cash back on anything that involves Apple, that involves app stores and services and hardware. So you get 2% cash back on any merchant that has Apple Pay. So pretty much 90% of all US merchants now take Apple Pay, which makes this a nice little catch all card if you guys are into the credit card game like I am. And then if you just want to use it as a normal credit card, then it is 1% cash back on everything else. And what I like about this is that the Apple Card unlocks a few different features that only is available for Apple Card customers, with the main one being the Apple Savings Account. So if you go into your Apple Wallet and go into your Apple Credit Card, this is the UI that you get. And what I love about Apple is just how simple they make everything. And again, I really wish Apple had like transfer partners in the travel kind of space and earned reward points instead of cash back because this is how I use my credit card points. But if you are team cash back and you do like to actually redeem that cash back, first off, you can redeem it on a daily basis and redeem it very easily because you can set it up where if I go into my settings here, go into daily cash, you can actually have it so every time you use your Apple card and you get that daily cash back, it can then go into your Apple cash balance, which you can use then again immediately. So for instance, let's say you buy $1,000 worth of Apple products, you'll get $30 back immediately, which then you can either use right away or you can have it go directly into your savings account. And as you can see, I've had this card pretty much since day one. I want to say four or five years ago now at this point. And this is the amount of lifetime daily cash back that I've received. I can see that most of it is in the Apple store because I pretty much only use this card now for Apple products. I very rarely use it for anything else. But it does give you a nice idea of how much you've actually been able to earn through daily cash back. And then to give you a glimpse into this Apple savings account, you do get to see that we are now at 4.5% APY, which is extremely competitive. Now I use another bank like SoFi, which gives me 4.6% APY on all my money. So depending on who you are and where you want to put your money, you know, that's totally up to you. But you can see that I'm earning 4.5% APY on my $333, and it does get paid out to you on a monthly basis. So if I go down here, you can see that my interest paid for February was $1.15. So that's free money that's being put into my account. And I've run some numbers and let's say you put $10,000 into this account, you're basically being paid almost $40 a month just to have that money in this bank account. And again, it's easily transferable. You can withdraw your money pretty much immediately. It takes one to three business days to move to your normal bank account. But with anecdotal evidence, it kind of takes only one day. By the end of the day, the next day, you'll have your money in your bank account or you can move this money directly into your actual Apple Cash card and then that happens immediately. So for instance, if you do have $10,000 in here and you wanna take out those $40 that you earned on a monthly basis to pay for your Chipotle that one day, you can then absolutely do that and it'll happen immediately when you use your Apple Cash card. 
So the Apple Wallet ecosystem kind of comes full force when you have the Apple Cash Card, the Apple Card, and then you also use your Apple Wallet as your kind of main hub of all your finances on your iPhone itself. So that's what the Apple Card gives you. Like I said, I'm gonna do a full review of maybe my four or five years later experience with the Apple Card, but basically if you get an Apple Card, you do unlock the savings account, which is something that most people really want. And again, it's a zero fee card, so it's not costing you anything. You just have to be approved for it and it's very easy to do so. The way that you actually apply for the card is you press this plus button and if you don't have the Apple Card, it'll show up as one of the options on here to apply for the Apple Card. And literally within five minutes, you could have a usable Apple Card because you don't have to wait for the Apple Card to show up in the mail physically. You can actually just start using it in Apple Pay, which is awesome to see. And then the last thing I do want to show off here is the monthly installments. So this lets you know exactly how many things you have currently running, what's been completed. So as you can see, these are a bunch of different ones that I've had completed over the years of all the different products that I've had because you get 0% financing on all Apple products when you use the Apple Card. And then if you do want to use your Apple Card as a physical card, maybe in store or online, you can click on that button right here to give you your actual card number because as you can see, there is no actual physical card number on the card itself. It literally is just a piece of titanium that they send with your name on it. But that pretty much covers everything from the Apple Wallet to the Apple Card to the Apple Cash Card and everything in between. So let's finish up this video and get out of here. So as you saw, the Apple Wallet application is an extremely robust app that I think is underspoken about and underutilized because yes, if you have the Apple Card, you get some niceties like having the high yield savings account and things like that. But again, that's only in the US and that's not gonna be a big demographic of people versus when you use your Apple Wallet in an all-encompassing way on the universal side, especially in places like Europe, and now in the US with more and more merchants fully adopting Apple Pay, it just becomes a peace of mind type of application, something that's kind of in your day-to-day, -day, similar to your Apple Watch, which is one of those things that you just use every single day and you don't really think about using it. So again, the Apple Wallet just adds more and more features on a weekly and monthly basis, and I'm excited to see more and more states here in the US adopt especially the government documentation type of usage and use cases with the Apple Wallet because at the end of the day, as much as I love having my leather wallet and my MagSafe wallet and things like that, having no wallet is a better outcome in my opinion. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave some comments down below if you guys learned anything new. Always curious to know. And let me know if you guys have an Apple Card. Do you use the Apple Wallet? Are you all in on the digital form of payment? Or do you still use cash on occasion? Let me know with a comment down below. And if you made it to the end, leave a little credit card in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.